Uh, you got a story about uh, how much these two final four runs are costing NC State with <laughs> not only raises and bonuses, but extensions. Uh, let's start with Kevin Keats, who has clearly uh, hit the jackpot after taking the Wolfpack to a Final Four for the first time in 41 years. Where does it start? I think it starts with a, a two-year extension, right? So he, he had an extension through 2028. Now this pushes him to 2030, uh, and he gets a 500 just for reaching the Final Four. I mean, not just, but uh, for <laughs> reaching the Final Four, he gets a $500,000 raise in each of those seasons. Um, so that's at least worth uh, – Six years, five hundred thousand, three million dollars, right there. Uh, plus, you're looking at, um, you know, three hundred thousand dollars in bonuses so far, and that can go up. Uh, you know, you can get another hundred thousand dollar raise if they win the national title. I mean, uh, they're, they're, NC State's going to be paying for this for quite a while, and I'm sure they'll take it. But they're going to be paying for it. The, and the interesting thing is that, and look, I would not have advocated for it, and I said it many, many times on this show and on interviews where I was on other stations where I'm like, I think he's a good coach. And I think they think he's a good coach. And I don't think they want to pay a good coach not to coach and then go hire another coach. So I kind of always thought that they were going to bring him back for another year, but the year ended so badly. And there was some apathy that I could have certainly seen them moving on, but I just didn't get that feeling. Um, So, if you're of the mind that they were going to fire him, what a turnaround. Well, and this is the question I would have for NC State fans. Now is not the right time to ask this, but they're probably going to rip up this contract and give him a new one. But even say they don't, he's, he's going to be making $3.2 million a year through 2030. Like he only, they only they had zero tournament wins in his first six <laughs> seasons. Like, <laughs> do you trust that? Is that the real NC State? level of the program or what you've seen since you know march started is the real level or is it somewhere in between and you're going to be paying him to the level of hey this is a sweet 16 type of coach this is a sweet 16 type of program you know three and three three point two million is not the high end by any means right it's not the low end either and so are you is the expectation going to be that hey it's not going to take us 41 more years to get to the final four we need to see regular ncaa tournament appearances or there's or or look, they're going to be on, NC State's going to be on cloud nine for for a decade, right? After right. this, but at some point you're going to have to earn that contract a little bit. So interesting story that kind of works with this. In 2006, LSU beat Duke in the Sweet 16. I was at the game. It was JJ Reddick's last game uh, for the Blue Devils. I, I'm trying to remember where that game. I think it was in Atlanta, uh, where the regional was held, and. LSU was not a fan at all of John Brady, who was the then the basketball coach. But he took LSU to a Final Four. His contract was up. Like the, he didn't he didn't have another year. They were gonna let him walk. But he took LSU to a Final Four. You can't let a final LSU can't let a Final Four coach walk away. And they had talent on that team. They had, like, big guys who played in the NBA. Garrett Temple probably played longer than most of their big guys as kind of a combo defensive-oriented guard. Um, So they had good players. So they signed him to a contract extension. I don't think he made it out of year two before they moved on from John Brady because they didn't like him to begin with. But I think this is different, and I think the passion for basketball at NC State like, I don't anticipate the program cratering is what I'm saying. And as long as the pro- program doesn't crater, I think Kevin Keats is going to be here for a while until he wants to leave. Yeah, I think that's fair. And and interesting in the way that they structure these contracts with these raises, those raises actually go into supplemental comp- compensation, okay. which, means, which means Keats gets it every year. But if there was a buyout, the buyout only counts against – uh, you know, his, his annual salary, which gotcha. doesn't change. So the annual salary stays the same, but the supplemental compensation goes up year, year by year. And so it, it shouldn't change any buyout information. Look, you know, I was there when they lost to Duke uh, at the beginning of the month, the beginning right. of March. And there, there, the 4th of March, they right, played there was Duke general 40. apathy in the apathy in PNC arena and, yeah. and the sense that like, all right, well, we don't know what's going to happen next, but are people really going to fill this place next year? And now all of a sudden they're in the Final Four. They're, they're America's sweethearts. Uh, I would imagine this is going to help with recruiting and the transfer portal and all that stuff. And so 
excitement around NC State basketball should be sky high next year. You would you would think. All right, uh, what did it mean for Wes Moore? My friend is actually going to join us in uh, nine minutes or whatever it is. Yeah, you know, Wes Moore, similarly structured contract in that he gets contract extensions for each, you know, for, for performance, uh, except he's already met all those. So his contract's <laughs> been extended as far out as it as it can be, uh, you know, by the letter of, of his contract. Right. He, he's got a $150,000 raise for reaching the Final Four, $150,000 bonus, another $50,000 bonus for where the women are going to finish in the, in the AP poll. He can earn another $150,000 raise for winning the national title and another um, – Fifty thousand, another hundred and fifty thousand in bonuses for reaching the title game, and then and then winning the national title. Um, his, his salary is is actually like a million dollars at the moment, and which is you know high for women's basketball, but certainly not the highest. I right. I do imagine he'd be in line for a new contract as well. My gosh, to to, to be Wes Moore, right? <laughs> I miss, for, so, honestly, I love Kevin Wes Moore. Much like DJ Burns, who has personality just coming out of his body, that's Wes Moore. He is, he is, this stage is going to be awesome for Wes Moore. They're gonna, everybody's going to see how much fun this guy is just as a person. I, and, I, and I look forward to that. Yeah, and I hope NC State gets enough, the women's team gets enough attention. One, because they're competing against the men in, for attention dollars. Right. But two, they're going to a Final Four that has Caitlin Clark and Paige Beckers and an undefeated South Carolina team. Right. Like I hope they, they there's there's gonna they're competing for a lot of attention dollars with the other women's teams that are there. So I hope this NC State team gets kind of the recognition or the attention that it deserves because it's a, a great story. And Westmore is a, a tremendous coach, and and I hope they get it because it's going to be a lot of. Caitlin Clark talk and undefeated oh. South Carolina talk and and Paige Becker's talk. I think the we talked to Wes last year. They had played Iowa last year, and I believe they played him out there uh, and beat him. And he says we held we held Caitlin Clark to forty seven. Uh, <laughs> <she, laughs> so they still managed to win the game somehow. Uh, but yeah, Kate, Caitlin Clark is a next level star. Uh, real real quick before I let Brian Murphy go. Um, uh, and by the way, when we started this segment, I was, uh, I was frantically trying to get in, uh, a, uh, a, an anytime goal scorer soccer bet. Um, how's, uh, how's a brief history of triangle sports, uh, going? How's the podcast going? What do we have coming up? Yeah, well, the podcast I thought came out really well. I hope hope people will check it out anywhere you get your podcast. A brief history of triangle sports, a four part series on, on how we got sports gambling here in, in North Carolina and, in the first week, North Carolina placed two hundred million dollars worth of bets. Uh, a lot of How that much? was, was two hundred million dollars worth of bets. In the first week? In the first week. Nice. How many of those were on NC State to reach the Final Four or NC State to win the national championship? We'll find out here shortly. But um, I think we're going to blow the projections out of the water. Now, a lot of that, I think about eighty-five million of that was was promotional bets. Right. So people certainly took advantage of of all the the bets that were out there, the free the free money that was out there. But I, I think we're going to – so I, I think it was $42 million in revenue, you know, taxable revenue right. um, from the gambling operators. They had estimated, I think, $50 million in the first year. We're going to blow past that number. Yeah. I mean, the, the amount coming to the state is going to be far higher, I think, than any any of the projections had, had set forth. And it'll be interesting. I, I'm watching for a couple of things. You know, one, you know, what do they do with all that money? Do, do they carve out some more of it for – gambling addiction? Do they mm -hmm. carve out some more of it for other athletic departments, um, including NC State and UNC, which are not getting any money right now? And then, you know, we've seen the NCAA come down hard, and we saw Armando Baycott talk about this, like prop bets right. on college athletes. Lawmakers in North Carolina have already said, we're not interested in, in regulating that, even though, excuse me, even though Charlie Baker's asked for some regulation yeah. on that. Um, I don't think that's going to change here in North Carolina, so you, you'll still be able to place you know, how many rebounds will DJ Burns get here in the final four? You'll still be able to place those bets next year, it sounds like. Um, but but those are some of the issues that I think we'll be confronted with in the next couple of months. But but the rollout's been tremendous. And at least anecdotally, that's all people want to talk about when I talk to them. It's incredible. I mean, I, I check my uh, I check my FanDuel account uh, like daily. It's not I mean, I'm not doing poorly, but I'm uh, I'm not exactly taking advantage of all of their uh, their free 
uh, bonus wagering. Uh, well, it's uh, unrelenting. They, they, they'll send you a bonus offer every single day, whether it's single game parlays right. or, or profit boosts or odds boosts. I mean, I don't even it, understand it any of that stuff. I can't, I can't fathom. I don't know. <laughs> My brain is not working that. I don't know why I can't figure it out. Uh, but I can't. It's, I have too many things to do. Um, do do we have a breakdown of which sports have done the best yet, or we won't have that? Uh, that will we won't get that until maybe the you know the fan duels of the world uh, actually break that down for us. Yeah, I'm imagining most of this is college basketball, right? That's what's happening right now. So I, right. I think it'll take a little time to see what you know how much golf betting there is or baseball betting. And we have and the U.S. Open coming, right? Right. So real and quick, obviously when we get into football season. Do do people who are coming into town, coming into the state for the U.S. Open, when they place wagers on their phones, uh, does it count for North Carolina or does it count for wherever they're based? It counts for North Carolina. Those those bets will will be counted. That's why they geolocate you so they know which bets are, are taking place big time in the state. And I think I think by the end of April we may have a breakdown on which operators are doing the best. So you know, is FanDuel and DraftKings have the majority of the of the market share, or is it more spread out to Caesars and ESPN and, and some of the others? Uh, I'll take Rory McIlroy right now to win the uh, win the U.S. Open. Brian Murphy. How about the Masters? That's even closer. Yeah, well, he's not going to win the Masters. <laughs> who, who is? I need your pick. I need to know. Oh, uh, man. It's uh, hard to bet against Scheffler, right? I, I, you, you'd just be a dope to bet against him right now. <laughs> I mean, un, unless he forgets which end of the putter to use, which, I mean, at times it's looked like that was the case. He's just a machine. I know he didn't win last week from a winning position, which was surprising for him. Uh, but, you know. He can't win every week. Maybe he can. I don't know. Um, but t- I'll tell you what. On Monday or later in the week, I will definitely give you my pick to win the Masters. There you go. I promise. Shuffler or Neiman. Those are the two favorites, I think. Joaquin Neiman. Very nice. Uh, then Liv Goff can remind us uh, how how their tour is so great because Neiman plays on it. Because um, that's what every time they're one of their players does well, they remind us how good. Like <laughs> no nobody has denied that you have good players. Nobody. Uh, anyway, uh, Brian Murphy at Murph's Turf on Twitter. WRL Sports investigative reporter. Brief history of Triangle Sports uh, gambling in North Carolina. I thank you, man. Uh, as always for the time. All right, thanks, Adam. You got it.